welcome to my channel Bamboo Betty. Uh, it was my birthday two weeks ago. I'm Leo, yes, thank you very much. I had a lovely time. But uh, it's August now and it's 2021 and time isn't real. What does it mean? Nothing. Time means nothing. Um, and I didn't even realise it was my birthday until I was told. I didn't even realise it was July to be honest. And uh, well, I'll tell you how it went. I think you know begonia coconut by now. She's currently asleep in her crab bed. And uh, she likes to blow the breakfast bugle randomly, depending on how early she has her evening supper. But on my birthday, it went like this. 5.27 a.m. This is begonia. Oh, sorry, I should say Begonia's Mexican. Uh, she speaks like Salma Hayek, but her voice is a bit higher. But obviously, I can't really do accents. I can do New Jersey, and I can do a terrible Belfast. But that's about it, really. So um, I'm just going to do Begonia's voice in my own voice. So anyway, <clears throat> here we were. 5.27am, it's dark, I'm in bed. Ma'am. Ma'am. Mam, mam, mam. Oh, good, you're awake. I've just done an Uber poop and I've left it there for you. Uh, I think you'll like it, but there's no kitty litter. It's breakfast time now. The milk's off. Oh, and the bathroom sink is blocked. I believe the problem will be your hair. Five thirty-five to seven thirty-five. Dust and hoover every inch of house because of heat wave hair shedding. 7.35 to 8.35. Stand in blazing heat next to brightest window to spend an hour packing an antique glass. Glass! Compote dish to America. America! Glass to America. Vow never to do that again. Just clothes and wood from now on. 8.35 to 10.35. Pack the rest of sales and not enough bags. Put on tight, bright yellow boho maxi dress. Have a rethink. Take it off and replace it with a bright yellow buffet dress. Much better. 10.35 to 2.35. Tear around in Peggy Lee. That's my fit. Two sacks of litter. Three shops for bags. Two shops for sink plunger. Failed. Only had big Daleks. One chemist for Solberdine. Realise I've come out in my house shoes, darn it. Two post offices, I can't park. Walk around the streets thinking, oh, this is nice, looks like Chelsea. Back home, salt litter, chain shoes, swift Solberdine. 2.35. Off to Allerton Golf Club for tea and cake. Quick stop to pick up a ginger vintage kitten paper parasol from a shop window display that I'd reserved. Meet two bombshells and tea dresses for a surprise afternoon tea. Divine, shizzle and giggles, home, pass out on the sofa. So that was a grand day out. That was a, a really fabulous birthday. Thank you very much. Um, and that was a Monday. The day, the week had started well. And I thought I was going to chance my luck and keep going. So I went to the flea market on Wednesday. I hadn't been in weeks. And I thought, oh, God, please, please present something fabulous. Just show me something amazing and uh lo and behold ta-da <laughs> what every girl needs a vintage plunger <laughs> it's even got the original price to get on it a pound now, I do love a story attached to an item or a vintage object, but I promise you, I am not the type of man that would buy a used second-hand plunger. This is brand new, unused, fresh out the box, a vintage plunger. Clean as a whistle, thank you very much. And a perfectly the right size, not very big, and squidgy, to fit over my Victorian sinkhole. Fabulous stuff. Um, now, that might not be everyone's idea of a, of a thrill, 
but I promise you it's mine but I did get some other little treats so what I'm gonna do is a little haul of some Scooby snacks and oops amazingly unlike me a lot of them are blue mm -hmm. here we go here's a little haul a few years ago I found a little painting in a charity shop and it was in the bottom of a box it was a bit dirty and uh, it was a bit unloved but it was a dot st a aboriginal style painting not by an aboriginal artist it was probably from a workshop or a sort of an art project but it was so cute it was so charming and i really loved it and it was of a little hog and uh, i've always really loved aboriginal art and the other day not in the flea market but in a charity shop i came across this absolute beauty and it's a kangaroo it is by Waterhole Dream. It is. Is it called Waterhole Dreaming? Or is that the company? Aboriginal art supplier, uh, handmade and painted in Queensland, Australia. I don't know what the 15 was. I think I paid £5 for this. And uh, it's a keeper. I love it. It's beautiful. And what else? Oh, yeah, at the flea market, uh, my first stop was. Um, at one of my regular guys and I got this little it's nothing special it's not old I don't know what that what that brand is Phoenix I'll google that later but it's a sort of little uh, Chinese dragon food dog style letter holder I suppose but what I'm gonna do is uh, because I don't have any letters that I want to display um, I want to get letters from the council tax uh, so I don't want to sit and look at them all day so what I'm going to do is give it a clean but I'm going to put like a big blob of blue tech in the bottom and maybe put some um, artificial flowers uh, or some decorative leaves in there and have it as a little flower display but in the meantime I'm going to put it in between my two food dogs on the mantelpiece so wait there little long boys is that going to fit? There we go. Cute. So I'll put some leafy leaves, flowery flowers in there. Gorgeous. And from the same dealer, I found this tiny little souvenir piece from Singapore Airport. It's Airtropolis, Singapore, I think that's Chambi, Chambi Airport. And it is dated on the bottom 1990. And I googled it, I looked it up, and this little piece was given to business travellers uh, on the opening of Terminal 2 at the airport. Uh, I thought initially it might have been a little souvenir piece from the airport, but it was actually given to the, um, to the passengers. There we go. Not vintage, but I'm a complete sucker for a critter. And I collect brooches too, I collect costume brooches. New or vintage, I don't mind really. And I put them on my Christmas trees as baubles and decorations. So these are modern, these aren't, these were, I think this was two pounds and I think this was, crab was about a pound. Um, but I think they're that much on Amazon. I'd rather buy them used from a trader in the uh, flea market than new from Amazon. But you know, you know. So cute, two little brooches hot from the factory in China I imagine <laughs> not hot from a factory in China but vintage Native American style probably um, I don't know if Native American um, people made these but I remember my Nana had some when uh, I was a little a little girl she had some souvenir pieces I don't know if she'd actually ever been to America but um, Certainly, I remember she had something very much like this. Uh, and on the back. Um, I think it's real leather. I think it's vinyl. But these are gorgeous. Native American style uh, necklaces, pendants with a thunderbird and the flower. And I also got, I don't know, I'm just going into a blue phase. 
I got some vintage beads. I would date these to the late 60s, 70s, purely by the um, quality of the chain inside. This is, as it got later, they started using a lot of um, plastic and thread, but this is metal the whole way, and it's got it's quite it's quite intricate, and they're quite shiny. So yeah, beautiful color. I absolutely adore brutalist architecture and modernist style. It, to be honest, it's right across the board. Architecture, I love a brutalist car park. <laughs> Uh, they're being pulled down by the day, so I like to, I get excited when I find one in um, in a really poor town. It hasn't had enough money to regenerate. <laughs> That's my kind of town. Um, so brutalist architecture, ceramics, fashion, painting. This coffee table obviously is brutalist and modernist. Um, and it's so hard to find things these days that haven't already been snapped up by someone else. However. I just couldn't believe my look. That same day, I found this a beauty. Look at that. Modernist, 60s or 70s, I think 60s. Um, just to absolutely die for. Stainless steel square piece choker with, I, I would say that's an abalone, 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 square stone. But it's absolutely stunning. I crazy excited when I saw it. It was in the cabinet in a charity shop and the lady was just not interested in the slightest in bending down to, to pick it up. <laughs> but I wasn't giving up. So uh, poor thing, she had to do it. And I, I thought of so, I was so excited. I saw each piece one at a time. So instead of saying, can I look at that, that, that and that, please, I, I sort of made a bend down and pick each piece of jewellery up, one after the other. So I'm sorry, madam. I'm sorry about that. But uh, uh, she was probably glad to see the back of me. In the same cabinet, I'm, I'm actually dry in the mouth with excitement. I found this 1960s Moda made in Malta. Can you see? Can you see? Mouth. There we are. Moda, made in Malta. Stainless steel, modernist pendant with two blue capuchons. Um, from the same cabinet, but nowhere near as thrilling, but still quite nice. Was this? I think it's nineties. Nineties, very heavy apple and diamante pendant. I love a bit of fruit jewellery <laughs> and also this modern accessorise peacock pendant. So very, very, very happy with that. I've got this gorgeous necklace that I got and I, I mean, I actually did pay out full price for it at the time back in the, back in the 90s, I think. And I for years I kept telling myself it was Elizabeth Bennett, but that's obviously not the right name. <laughs> this isn't Elizabeth Bennett. And I think her name is Bartlett, Eliza Bartlett. But am I just mixing up characters from historical books? <laughs> anyway, found this fabulous thing too. It's a cascade of balls. Gorgeous. Mm. I feel like Elizabeth Taylor. That's the end of my jewellery finds from that day. Uh, but I found also in the flea market this vintage, I think it's 70s, um, medallion tooled embossed leather belt. It almost meets. However, I've got a plan. I've, I've got another. I've got another story to tell you about that. But that's for another time. So. At the moment, this is just for looking at. This is not for wearing out. For some reason, I bought a Euro Disney Resort brochure. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. I got excited. I thought it might have a story to tell, but it hasn't really. Um, I think it's from 91, but that might just be the print date. Could be from yesterday. I don't know. However, 
what is exciting is Mandy, the phantom swimmer. Look at that. Let's look inside. So, here we go. Printed and published in Great Britain. 185 Fleet Street. I used to work on Fleet Street. Uh, DC Thompson & Co. Limited, 1985. Now, in 1985, I would not have been seen dead buying this, reading it, anything it. However, now, <laughs> I could not put it down. It was absolutely thrilling. I was gripped from the very first page. It's a complete photo story. And uh, it's so brilliantly written that I thought it was probably, probably going to be really terribly sexist and hopeless and just oh cringeworthy but it was amazing i won't spoil it for you because um i'm going to send this to a friend but uh honestly it was like a really intense colombo and uh i was gripped from the first page and uh i loved it so now i'm on the lookout for lots more um mandy magazines <laughs> well it's 30 years too late. Sounds about right for me. <laughs> I'm just giving you a sneak peek of what's to come. Now I'm on a strict teacup ban. I'm not allowed to buy any more teacups or tea sets. So I just got the four. <laughs> However, <gasps> what I am allowed to buy, this is a completely self-imposed embargo by the way, is Mexican vintage ceramic divided serving platters with amazing unchipped bunches of grapes. Oh my god. I'm going to have my dinner from this tonight. I'm going to make something that has a f a f four components. <laughs> and this is by, oh sorry, I can't read it. But I'll insert something for you. I did work it out, but it's too blurry and now my glasses aren't doing me or you any favours. So, uh, that's a vintage Mexican serving platter, but look at those grapes. They're amazing. And it's white, it's so white. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, glass cups. Sometimes when you do about three or four charity shops in one day, you'll find that there's a sort of a theme running through, and even though it might not have come from the same person, somehow it is kind of it happens where you'll find lots of things from either the same country or the same maker. Uh, but these are German Feinstenberg. Oh my God, forgive me. I'm so sorry. Feinstenberg? Roll five stars. Do forgive me if I'm saying that terribly. I love polka dots. And these are just the most incredible colour. They're an indigo blue. It's almost purple. And they're thick quality, almost restaurant quality. Um, so there was no way I was going to leave these. Not a chance, even though I'm fully loaded for tea sets. I don't even drink coffee. <laughs> and uh, we're not allowed anyone around the house because of the pandemic. But um, no, I love that. Love that. Gorgeous. And what goes so beautifully with them, even though it's quite a contrast, are these amazing little German folk art people. Oh, hello. This is the little boy. He's wearing trousers. And I walked past him in the window twice and I thought, oh, that's not my style. But I can't walk past them three times. So I just went in and bought them and had a good laugh with the ladies in there. I know them quite well. And... Uh, yeah, these are, wait, let me get the other one. It's a lady. Oh, it's a little, oh, and the hands on the hips. Excuse me, what? The sink is blocked. They are, again, please, my profound apologies if this is terrible pronunciation, but Heise, Heise, Germany, original Bunslau. Bunslau. 
and I'm absolutely obsessed with these two. They're my new best friends. Absolutely gorgeous. And they go so beautifully with those coffee cups. So I'm going to do a little um, styling. A little, maybe a little breakfast styling. Um, sorry, I keep showing you a bit of the newspaper in the corner. Sorry about that. Um, and none of us really knew what they were, to be honest, in the shop. I thought at first that they should have had corks. And so did the other lady in the shop. Um, but having a quick Google, there's only a pair on Etsy and they say that they're candlesticks. But they're either candlesticks or little vases. I can see them in a alpine lodge with some woodland um, flowers, some wildflowers in them. Um, or maybe oil, maybe for oil, they would have had stoppers in them. Because I have seen a little not a teapot but um like a sort of a cheese dome in a similar style uh so i'll keep looking if you know what they are please leave a comment that would be fantastic but uh until then i'm just going to love them for for their cuteness gorgeous quick one a silvac uh sheldish ceramic with a green interior i'll just put that straight in the window i forgot i had it actually I'll put it in Begonia's tropical bay window paradise. Finally, two of my favourite pieces of clothing that I found, two vintage items. This is the most fabulous Youth of Joyce from Georgia Mildred Glamour Puss 70s dressing gown. I'll show you a full length picture of that later. It, it, it's completely nylon, a polyester or acrylic, you know, that fabric. But it's plush. It's a go it's a quality nylon. I love it. It's quite satiny, it's quite silky. However, my favourite find was this. Vintage 80s Pepsi and Shirley puff skirt. Mini. Amazing. The silhouette of this dress is phenomenal. And it, again at the time I would not have been seen dead in it. Now I'd have to be dead to get in it. <laughs> But um, <laughs> anyway, sorry about that. Oh no, 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 stop. Um, what I'm going to do is put this on the mannequin. I've already been playing around with it and show you several ways to dress it up and style it up, either from the original era, because I've got some stuff to go with it, or um, something that would make it completely contemporary. So here we go, go upstairs and we'll go get the mannequin out. Worked like a dream. Total result. Thank you, Vintage Plunger. So, I'll turn that top off. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed it and uh, you'd like to watch some more, please subscribe. It would mean the world to me. Uh, or give me a thumbs up or a like or leave a comment. Uh, something nice. Thanks very much. So, uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.